Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Play Spectorio Space Exploration where we're about to be hit by yet another um, coronal mass ejection. So let's see how this one goes. Um, I completely forgot about this until right now. So um, I was meaning to start recording a bit earlier and talking about how I've been preparing. But I haven't so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, looking over here, <coughs> things are looking generally pretty good. I've got about oh, only 1.4 million in here. 4 million steam in that one and another 2.2 million steam in that one so I have got a decent amount actually this one's running let's quickly set these going oh I'm in the wrong viewing mode ah. I probably haven't got time for this now um, it's been pretty quiet so far it is yeah it is heading for Norvis so that's I should be in about to be in a little bit of trouble there it is it's, it's hit okay so I want you to go ahead and you to go ahead and you let's load them all up and get the uh, these nuclear plants up and running oops I need to turn that one off again uh, right okay so that that'll mean I've got as much as possible as you can see all of my steam engines have kicked in now the turbines have kicked in at full because we are now using as you remember from last time you see the power going up and up and up here the uh, power being produced by the um, turbines has gone up as well and then it's peaked at this point which is a little bit unfortunate um, and it's starting to come down again that's a bit of a worry uh, the accumulators are coming up to sort of to also to match it um, the power's going down quite slowly in the accumulators I think we're doing better than we were before so how much power are we actually kicking out here um, 1.1 and a half gigajoules okay let's ch Check how that how that compares to what we're expecting to see. Um, it's going to be in energy beams. Oh, it's going to be that's a later one. It's, it's, it's already gone. It's already gone. Oh, uh, what was I saying? Was I was I, uh, here we go. Um, it's peak. It's coming back down again, and we've still got more than half the power available in the accumulators. I think we've managed to tank this one. I think this has actually been completely successful. You can see it's dropping off fairly quickly. The the power that's coming out of the accumulators is also dropping. Um, to be honest, so is the power coming out of the steam turbines, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, maybe it's, it probably also helps that this is struck during the day as well, so we're getting a little bit of power out of the solar panels. But now, yep, the accumulators have stopped. Have stopped um, powering the um, powering the the, the the umbrella defense. That power is still dropping, and the uh, turbines are well. The turbine power is also still dropping. But not too quickly. I mean, it's 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 still clearly far more than is required. And as you can see here, the power in the accumulator is going back up again. So I think that means we've weathered. Yes, it's stopped now. We've successfully weathered it. My all my preparations have been um, have been successful. Oh, thank goodness for that. Right. And so we'll let the uh, as you can see all the um, well over here. The, these turbines have been a bit pathetic. I should have watched those and seemed to watch them dropping off. Um, but yeah, you can see these tanks over this end are empty of steam. These have got actually some in them but there's but yeah the all these turbines have just they used up all of the available steam and it shows that 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 system that I had set up just wasn't really passing the steam around well enough this whole thing with this extension down here is is a bit of a waste of time and space I should probably have put in another of these sort of um, these little bent over power plants just just holding everything there together and now the steam steam coming out of the turbine just trickle back down to normal and I think that means yeah if we look at the um, power consumption and everything's just done it, it's all happy and back to normal the um the the accumulator power has all been used up so with that starts drop back to, down to nothing now i think it was probably this was probably helped because by the looks of it and i haven't actually checked this yet oh uh, that iron mine's dead uh, that wasn't what i was looking at yeah so because this is completely backed up we didn't have the power draw from these uh, core miners however i did set up this accumulator and switch combination here that were were set to cut those off if if necessary if the um, if the power ever dropped below 100% in the accumulators, so it turns out that wasn't required. But even so, it was nice to have it there just in case. Um, yeah, so that's that's been successful. I'm really quite pleased with that. <laughs> that's has it been about four, five of these um, coronal mass ejections, most of which have just not gone. Let's just say not gone quite so well, shall we? And um, 
Uh, this one, this one actually did get, we, we survived it. So I'm pleased with that. Now, as you might have noticed from the very beginning of this episode, I'm back down on Norvis now because I, there were a couple of things that I wanted to um, wanted to fix. The first one of those was the yellow science, which um, I've now up here, which I've um, I've got that that's working again now in theory. Um, it is working except that there's not enough um, low density structure and yeah, well actually no, there is just about enough um, robot frames production going on for the amount of low density structure production that's making it through. Why is this so slow? Why is this so slow? Oh, it's just the rate of the machines. The machines aren't fast enough so I need to come down here and just shove a load more of them in to be honest. Um, now the glass is being used up as fast as it's coming in so that's possibly not going to help. I'm going to need a, a better supply of glass as well. Um, but then glass is also being used in large quantities. Actually it's not. This is this is coming back down again. I, I, yeah I don't know why that's so broken up. Um, so yeah I might I might set up a, a sort of a, um, a sub factory somewhere else for making the low density structures because we are getting through a lot of those um, the reason the reason there's the the reason the um, yellow science is struggling is because a lot of the low density structures that are being made well half of them obviously are being piped off this way and going up this belt and then probably all being sent up into space or being used for space related stuff um, as you can see, there's yeah, they're, they're being pulled out of there as fast as they're being made. So I need more. I need. I think I need more production of those. Um, I did something else. Oh, as part of, yes, as part of the yellow science thing, I ripped out a whole section of uh, construction machines along here, which is why you've got all of these sort of slightly confused-looking um, inserters here. But essentially. I've, I've pulled it down, so we've just got these these machines here making the little electric motors, passing them up here, making the big electric motors, and I've swapped low density structures for no, was it low density? No, it was the other uh, the other motors for steel. So that's that's all working fine now. That was the recipe change. Um, down here, I wanted to make some. No, that's not the right button. There we go. Down here, I wanted to make some minor changes to my defences because this one on the end over here got blown up. That's supposed to be a flame turret. So what I want to do down here is extend these um, these turrets further out into the sea, because as you can see, this one uh, I don't need quite that much. Is that the right width? Maybe that one. No, let's make it one bigger, and then I can still get the wall in here. Oh, actually, that is one bigger than I need it to be. Um, yeah. So as you might have noticed, that turret on the end had got blown up because the biters had come, were coming in from this direction and attacking it. So what I want to do here is I want to put one of those in there. Then I want to take a copy of this bit, I guess, from there to about there, I suppose. Uh, we're dropping in the turret, flame turret there like that. Is that then no room for another one there? I think it is. I think that, yeah, that is the right place. And then another one there. So we'll do that. Get a bit more coverage in from here. I'm going to need to grab the flame turrets out of my train. That's absolutely fine. I can do that. Build that up. Do I have enough underground pipes? I do have enough underground pipes. Excellent. And now I also need to make sure, yeah, these aren't being covered by the robo ports. Stop getting caught up by the belts. So I need to put that in there. In amongst all these rocks. Great. I think I'm waiting for construction bots to come over from somewhere else on this um, thing. Let's do this by hand. I'm, I'm impatient. I mean, if my bots had done it, that would have been great, but they didn't, so I'm going to do it by hand. Uh, then, of course, I need power for it as well, like that. And let's gather up the stone, just because it's here and convenient. Okay, so this is something I've mentioned before. Have I put, has this wall been placed? Yes, I think it has. Yes, it has. Um, this is something I've mentioned before. When, you, when you're protecting an end of a of a sort of a cove like of a, coming up to the edge of edge of the coastline like this you need to stick your turrets way out into the um into the into the water so that you can get the sort of the directional fire coming in from both directions otherwise you get the the biters when they come in from the edge they, they can get in without without the enough defenses being able to shoot at them so well as it was before i had up to this turret i think this was the one that got destroyed um, and so the that meant as the biters came in from here, I only had this one, this one, and, and a few sort of along here shooting at them. 
whereas if I, with the way it's set up now, I've got all these ones along here as well. So we get double the double the firepower, and I've put in some extra flame turrets so we can get a bit more of the, um, the fire defence in there as well. So that's relatively straightforward. That's something I've been uh, yeah need, needed to do. So I'll send, I'll send my train back to the construction train stop to get me back up there while I'm doing talking about this, and I'll put the rest of those turrets back, flame turrets back in here because I don't want I don't want to actually carry them around with me all the time. Here we go. So this is what I was talking about in the previous episode about the um, the efficiencies of the various different types of different ways of getting things into space. So I'd been trying to work out what the most efficient way to take things up into space is, and I'd originally just looked at the, compared the cost of a rocket, a rocket and a rocket per stack, of course, with the cost of a delivery cannon per per stack, which is one delivery cannon capsule. Uh, but the th then it was pointed out to me that um, actually I'm say I'm recovering 28% of my rocket components, um, as it says in here. So we've got the 28% being being recovered, and I checked that, and that does appear to be pretty much true. Um, it, I had, I had, um, I've been recombining them into the into the bundled up ones, and I had five and six of them because there's five in each uh, in each one. I'd had 25 or th and 30 back from two rocket launches, so that seems to, those numbers seem to be correct. So I, I, I did the additional maths to um, to work out what that that meant for the um, uh, for the for the amount for the cost of producing the rockets. And well, if we, if we have a look down the numbers here, it was still about. And the, these are all rounded a little bit. I did go from the original numbers, but then rounded them again once they once they came out at the other end. <laughs> so we've got the. Um, it's about the same amount of bricks. It didn't make a lot of difference there, and that's still about the same as a delivery cannon. But it's made um, glass has been made significantly cheaper to the point where it actually uses less glass per rocket um, per rocket stack than it does per delivery cannon. Iron and copper are much more expensive for delivery cannons. For, sorry, for rockets though. You were still using a lot more of those. Um, and I've converted the steel into iron here as well, so it's a ratio of five to one. I just wanted to add that in there, just because rather than having them split out and separate, it, seemed, it made more sense to put them, to combine them. Uh, plastic is significantly more per rocket, which is interesting. Sulfur is more. Oh no, sorry, which is expected rather. Sulfur is more per delivery cannon though, so that one is actually more expensive on that side. Uh, you need a little bit of blue circuits, not very much, some batteries. A coal is just for the delivery cannon. So, so then I added all of that up and um, I waited it a little bit because blue circuits are significantly more expensive to produce than, say, iron plates. And um, batteries are a little bit more expensive as well. So I sort of, I, I, I waited it a little, bit, a little bit based on those to, uh, to bump it a, a little bit more in favour of the delivery cannon. But as you can see, that, that means I'm estimating it costs about 160 resources per stack to go by rocket and 115 but that becomes 115 with the 28% uh, part recovery and it only costs 93 per delivery cannon capsule so it is still cheaper to send stuff up by delivery cannon so I am going to carry on using my um, my massive bank of delivery cannons up here that are merrily firing away so it's the iron that's going at the moment I think it is uh, so the, I'm going to leave the, and the copper one over here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave those firing, and and I might even put in another copper one because there's a distinct shortage of uh, copper in in, uh, in in my um, uh, orbital base. Uh, but I am going. But it, it does mean I'm going to think a bit more about make about things that are being made up in space. So, for example, the uh, the, the substrates that are turned into into the memory cards. I talked about these uh, in the last episode as well. The, the, these things can be made on the ground and then shipped up there. So I'm going to set up a large factory that's going to start doing those for me. Build up uh, loads of those, shove them, shove them in the rocket and take them up. And it means I'm going to completely throw away my earlier plans to start making green circuits and possibly red circuits in space because that's complete nonsense. Um, that's that's just going to be massively inefficient. You're much better off shoving them in a rocket. Granted, that sort of assumes that you end up filling the rocket up, and my rocket is isn't all, isn't actually that full yet. There's yeah, that's about about half full maybe. Now I can bump some of the numbers on these things. I could say actually I'm going to take a lot more of these be uh, belts. I'm going to take more of the substrates because I know I'm going to get through that. I could take more red circuits. All these sort of things. I could take more of those things up if I wanted to. More science packs if I ever get around to if they ever get made quickly enough. Um, so yeah, belts would be a good one because that has filled up. I need to speed up my production of these um, substrates. Uh, scaffolds, sorry, not substrates. Um, what's limiting that? Is it? 
No, it's the heat shield tiles. I'll have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to go up the chain and look at why things are slow. <laughs> um, so that yeah, so there are a lot of things that can be put into the rocket, and I could put them in in larger quantities if I can work out what it is I'm going to need. And of course, next time I go up there, I'm going to need to, need a rocket in order to take myself up there. So that's that's going to be a reason for a rocket to go up anyway. So that that makes sense too. Um, but yeah, having it, it, I'm glad I looked into that sort of that uh, rocket recovery um, stuff because it does make a big difference to the uh, to the economies of it. Another thing I looked into, which didn't surprise me enormously, but I wanted to make see how much how wasteful I'd been being, was um, I've now started taking up sul uh, sulfur by delivery cannon capsule as well, uh, and that's. Well, it works in the same way all the other ones do. I'm not going to tell you about that again. But what I've been doing previously, we've been shipping, shipping coal up there, and then using the um, coal liquefaction in order to make the um, in order to make sulfur for, from oil. And yeah, that that was a silly idea. That was a very silly idea. So now all of that has gone. I've pulled up. I've pulled up the um, the machine here that was making the uh, the sulfur. And just got rid of it completely. And we're now down here. We've got the sulfur being brought over by logistics bots, as you can see, and then just uploaded into this uh, into this machine that's making my coolant. Because I was getting through quite a lot of sulfur for that. Because it turns out the coolant does actually get used up a little bit. It's I think the recipes are 90% efficient or something like that, so you do get quite a lot of coolant returned, but not all of it by any means. And as you can see, this tank down here it still isn't. It, it's not. It's not filling up. So I might need to put in another machine to do this. But I'm also rather limited by the copper supply up here, which is it's a bit of a problem, but there is actually literally nothing I can do about this. I do need to ship copper up for this, and shipping it up in plates is the most efficient way, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and as discussed, it's cheaper, it's more efficient to do that by delivery cannon, yada yada yada. Um, but yeah, this this is made in the, in the space manufactory. There is no way to make this on, on the planet, so I can't make it down there and then bring it up. And even if I did, it would all be in barrels anyway, and I'm pretty sure that would be less efficient because, oh my god, barrels. But that said, this is running most of the time, so it's, it's not doing too badly. Up here we've got the uh, coal. I should probably make that an electric boiler rather than a coal one, to be honest. <laughs> It'd be a little bit more sensible. Uh, but we're liquefying the coal. We're making and making the uh, the various the various oils over here. I don't know why that's still so low. What are we doing with this oil? With this petroleum gas, rather? We're putting it onto the bus. And it's going to here where it's been. Oh, it's been made into orange goo. Which is, yeah, okay, it's using all of it up, but it is sort of at a sustainable point. And that's probably, and a lot of that's being turned, being used for polishing these, um, uh, the, these substrates. And then some of it is also being used further down for science. So there's not, I don't really see much I can do about this, about this coal, this coal usage. Because I'm pretty sure this is the best way, TM, to be making uh, petroleum gas and light and heavy oil. Um, so that brings me on to the other maths I was, I've been doing. So if we look at the, <laughs> this diagram, this is going to be a little bit maths heavy on this episode. I do. I, I do. I apologise. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's enough overlap between people who are interested in Factorio and people who are interested in maths that it doesn't matter. So um, yeah, numbers. So it turns out turn, making steam is a one-to-one -one process from from water. So you make you make you turn one water into one steam. That's nice and neat, I suppose. So you then and you then turn. Ten, so for every 10 coal you put in, you get out 10 petroleum gas that you can then just go straight on and use for whatever. You get 20 light oil, and you get 90 heavy oil, but 25 of that was used previously to in order to make the um, in order to run the process. So that doesn't really. So you're actually only making 65 extra from there. Of that, you can then t the heavy oil can then be turned into light oil. So 40 light oil can be turned into 30. 40 heavy oil can be turned into 30 light oil. And then 30 light oil from the first and second steps of that, so you use both of those, can be turned into petroleum gas, into, into 20 petroleum gas. So each time it, it's sort of, I hesitate to call it a lossy process because you're making something different out of it, but it's still, you're, you're not getting as much out of it as you'd expect. And then finally you can turn 30 petroleum gas into two sulphur. And each of those steps requires more water as well, so that's even more stuff I'd have to bring up. Now if we have a look at the numbers for this, and we sort of, Push, 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 actually multiply through, then it turns out for every 10 coal, uh, um, you need 167.5 water, and that makes you 55.8 um, petroleum gas. Uh, so, and, and then for every, and as, as I said before, 30 petroleum gas and 30 water will make two sulfur. So, 
the if you if you push through all of those numbers then you get out at the end you, you work you can work out that um, you're making 10 for every 10 coal and 200 water you're making roughly four sulfur <clears throat> now t i believe uh, i don't think there's any easy way to tell what these things stack up to um let's have a look at the let's have a look at those um delivery cannons Th those will probably tell me uh, so coal stacks up to 50 sulfur stacks up to 50 as well okay so they're the, they're the same but that means you're sending it up sending it up as sulfur is two and a half more times more efficient even if you don't even consider the ice and then when you melt then when you when you consider the ice the water has to be made from ice uh, but, oh so one uh, hmm. but that actually that's that's very very efficient the water packs that packs down really really neat you can fit 200 ice in a delivery cannon capsule and each of those 200 ice turns into 100 water I believe I don't know where the recipe is for that <laughs> I don't know where melting melting ice is but yeah I'm pretty sure that's that is as it comes out as it went in to so get 100 for each one so you're sending up massive quantities of water in each one of these delivery cannon capsules so that's that's much less of a, of a, um, a, a, a factor but the fact that you get twice, two and a half times as much sulfur than uh, than you do with with coal, or as, than you would if you processed the coal, means that I'm I'm much better off sending this up as as, as sulfur. The next thing to consider, and I've I've thought about this a little bit, is whether there's anything else that I'm doing up here that could be done down on the ground. I'm pretty sure there isn't. Uh, okay, okay, actually, I take that back. I could be making these solar panels on the ground. That's probably a bit silly, but I'm I'm. Despite the appearance of this solar field, I'm not actually making all that many of them on the grand scheme, scheme of things. It's things that go into science packs that really, really matter. Then we've got all of these sort of things, like that needs to be made in space, that needs to be made in space. So the only thing, the only possible things, are, uh, I could possibly make copper wire, but I think, I think I'm better off shipping the copper up for that. I can't make space manufacturers. All of these things, they're being made in the big machines. These ones I've discussed, I can make these, so I'm going to start doing that. All the rest of it, all these machines are space only, so there's nothing else I can hear I can pull down onto the planet. That's a bit of a shame. But one thing I do want to do, I've noticed that I'm having serious power issues up here. Every time every time this particle accelerator kicks in, the amount of power I'm using spikes wildly, and that often dis discharges my accumulators completely. So these the solar panels can't keep up. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do so I'm going to stick some efficiency modules in here, and that's allowed. Um, efficiency modules are allowed, as you can see there, and that'll make this. Well, obviously, it'll make it more efficient. So it'll use it'll use much much less power. Now I need to try and check the rules for efficient for modules. I think um, there is yeah minimum consumption is 20%, and each one of so each one of these will take will knock 40% off. So if I stick two two mark tier one um, efficiency modules in this machine it will then start using 20% of the power if, if I understand the way it does the maths correctly and that's going to make an enormous difference up here in, in space where power is actually a bit limited possibly I should go in and stick them all over the place on Myokin as well because I'm having not so much power difficulties there but I can't put in a nuclear power plant so it's worth considering I wonder if I can put them in the transmitters as well because they're quite power hungry no, they don't take modules, so I can't put them in that. But but I've only got one of those up here, so that's not too bad. I've put in efficiency modules, uh, productivity modules, um, into all of my, um, into most of my science um, labs. I need to bring up make make some more for these ones. But so that's going reasonably well. That's that's about as good as it gets. How how do I get up to the next tier? Um, I'm starting to ramble again a bit, but this is actually I think this is actually quite interesting stuff. So I'm interested in the next tier of productivity modules. That's these ones. So they require vulcanite and machine learning data. That's not too difficult. I have some of that up here. Um, and it's easy re easy research to do that. So let's get that one researched and and, 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 um, and done. And I can pull all the modules out of these and then upgrade them all to use the better better uh, productivity modules and that'll get me more of this this purple bar will grow quicker get me more free science what about the next one what does that do? oh that takes green science which is going to be the next one i'm going to be looking into um so I'd, i'll i'll be able to do that relatively soon i hope but not at the moment um oh and those are things that yeah that, that's quite expensive but i think may well be worth it 
um, and that's going to take my that's going to give me productivity module five. Oh no, yeah, which does where is it? oh there we go down there. It's going to use a lot more power, um, but it's going to it's going to put productivity up by twelve percent on each of them. Um, so I think that's going to be worthwhile because it's going to save me so much in the way of resources. Um, yeah, so I think that's definitely going to be a very promising couple of next steps to take. Um, there we go, it's finished already. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm going to come up, get get some better better productivity modules in these in these machines, um, get some and efficiency modules in this one because those are really cheap. They, I mean, efficiency modules. It's it's, it's some red circuit. It's a it's a red circuit and five green circuits. That's peanuts. That's that's cost almost nothing. I I, I should be using these already everywhere. Um, and productivity modules all over the place as well, probably, but they're not quite—they're not quite as spectacular at the low level. Um, you only get a four percent productivity boost for those, so it's not quite as—not quite as exciting. Um, but yeah, I want definitely want to start using those. I don't know what the point of these. I mean, we've got energy consumption minus a hundred percent. What's the point in that when the minimum minimum consumption is twenty percent? Or is it for when you put? Oh, it'll be for. Ah, I see. It's for when you put in other modules like this one for example where the energy consumption goes up 100% you could stick in a uh, one of these and bring it back down again mm, I'm gonna have to do some more maths <laughs> and work out whether I'm better off with well basically what the trade-offs are between different efficiency modules and different um, and possibly putting in one of these as well into into my labs where I've already put in six modules that's interesting hmm <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be worth thinking about because this is all this this solar farm is. I mean, it's working, but it's 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 taking up quite a lot of space. And I'm yeah, if I can save a bit of power, that might be worth it. Or it might just be worth just maxing out the efficiency in order to reduce the amount of science I need to produce over here. That's something to think about. I'll have a good ponder over that, and um, and and maybe maybe you know you know me. I'll draw some more graphs or something, and we'll uh, see where it goes from there. Thank you for watching. That's given me some stuff to do, and I'll um, I'll see where we go from there. <laughs> and um, oh, I need more more chillers up here as well. Um, stuff to do, stuff to do. I'll keep me busy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.